Hey everyone, and how are you all doing? Today, we're gonna go through a really interesting comic, as Vader actually goes to Padme's tomb. Now, we've seen this in Legends, but this is going to be the new canon. Now, if you haven't seen the previous episodes, go check them out. I'm gonna link them down below. Without further ado, let's begin. Darth Vader revealed the truth. He is Luke Skywalker's father. But Luke refused Vader's call to the dark side of the Force and escaped. Enraged, Vader has taken a squad of Death Troopers and the Imperial Forensics droid Z-67 on a quest of revenge against everyone who hid Luke from him. Vader's new ally, Queen Amidala's former handmaiden Sabe, has sworn a vengeance of her own against her queen's killers. But Sabe has betrayed Darth Vader. She believes the Dark Lord to be Padme's murderer and now springs her deadly trap. Now if you don't remember, in the last issue, Sabe and her friends summoned a Sando, which is this massive thousand-year-old creature, almost that showed up with a beacon to eat Vader. As the creature shows up, they all make a run for it, where the droid tells him that the Sando is an aqua monster, the apex predator of Naboo's core, and that there are zero records of an aqua monster being killed by anything other than another aqua monster. So what does Vader do? Well, with a little help from the death troopers distracting it, he slices right through the beast, being the first in history ever to kill one. As they're caught in a Gungan bubble wart projector, they're pretty much rendered defenseless. As what would happen if you shot inside of one of those, your blast would just ricochet back onto you eventually. Vader is ambushed by literally everyone, and some familiar faces from episode 1. I'm Captain Rick Oli, and we are the Amidalans. We sentence you to death for the murder of Padme, Queen, and Senator of Naboo, and General Anakin Skywalker, her Jedi protector. You knew them. We fought by their side when the Trade Federation invaded. And of course, Vader's only real concern is if these people saw Padme die. He says, no, we just buried her. And that's really all Vader needed to know. The rest of the scene, Vader just absolutely slices and dices every single one of them, using the Force and his lightsaber in a crimson fury of death. Finally killing the last man who vows to die for Padme and Anakin, Vader walks away from the battle scene to go to Padme's tomb. The tomb of Padme Amidala. As we see Padme's tomb, Vader walks towards it, when he is stopped by another ambush, Padme's handmaidens. Now, if you didn't know much about Padme's handmaidens, you actually get to learn a lot about them in the Queen's Shadow book. Now, they might just look like regular handmaidens, but these are actual ninjas. They are the elite of the elite, and they are extremely deadly. They were meant to protect the queen at all costs. This meant to be ready for all sorts of enemies. That is, until they come across Vader. We get some backstories on who each of them are, such as Erite and Rabe, who were two of the queen's earliest bodyguards. Then Sache, or Sache, if you want to get fancy. She was there with Anakin when Qui-Gon's funeral was taking place. And Dorme, a lot of you might remember her from episode 2 when she was crying as Padme was leaving. Vader has enough of this, he's not feeling it. So he toys with them a little bit, he doesn't really want to hurt them, because they did protect Padme after all. But after he gets a couple zaps and hits to the face, he finally has enough. Force choking all of them in mid-air and slamming them to the ground, pushing them away with the Force, he is finally alone. He walks towards the tomb a massive structure of Padme, to find the Jabor snippet, which was buried with her. It now rests on a blue satin pillow, encased with impenetrable glass in her tomb. As Vader looks at it, he knows it's the crutch in his armor. It's the same Jabor snippet that he made as Anakin Skywalker when he was just voyaging to become a Jedi, the first time he had ever gone on a ship to outer space, the first time being free as a slave. He gave Padme this very necklace so that she would remember him. And it was the same one that she was buried with when she died. She knew that the Anakin Skywalker who was today, and by today I mean Revenge of the Sith era, was not the Anakin Skywalker that she fell in love with, was not the Anakin Skywalker that she married. It was someone else, and therefore, holding on to the Jippur snippet was like holding on to the last bit of Anakin that existed. So Vader looking at this is a very reflective and interesting moment. As one of the handmaidens asks if he's done here, he says, No. Using the force to open the massive stone doors as he enters the tomb of his dead wife. Anakin.
And that's the end of this issue. You guys know this is the most interesting storyline for me, as this is treading on the Vader fan film, story-wise. I always thought it would be super interesting to see Padme's tomb and for Vader to go back there and be very conflicted. Now, if Mace Windu shows up in the next episode inside the tomb, How can you do then we're gonna know something's a little funny there, but I'm very excited to see where this issue goes next and to find out how Vader is going to battle with his internal demons and the worlds that are going to collide within his own head between Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader. And we can even see that in the next issue's front page. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. See you in the next episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you soon. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always.